Bobby, Harrison, Jake, Jacob, and Max, get ready. You're going to be on episode 28 of the Red Golf Swing Analysis Series. Ladies and gentlemen of the Lion Golf Academy, thanks again for joining me for another episode, episode 29 or 28, I forget, but I already said it in the intro, so it's probably the right one. Keep in mind, just because this is Reddit Golf Swing Analysis does not mean you have to follow Reddit. If you are watching this and you want to submit your video, please submit a face on and down the line. Make sure the down the line is at least on the line of your foot so we can make sure your feet are aiming in the right position and also your club face and relate it back to your cause and effect. And this is all about cause and effect. This series is to help educate our students and our guests about what cause and effect can do to your golf swing. Basically, it comes down to from the start of your swing to the follow through. I don't watch any of these students. This is the first time I see these students is on this video to kind of keep it fresh and keep me on my toes a little bit. It's helpful if I know the range of motion. It's helpful if I know your history and your lesson history. So when you do send these, please send me whatever information you would like, any injuries that you have, any previous lessons you've taken, how long you've been playing, basic ball flight issues that you want me to take a look at and i'll take it from here um, if you do like this content please hit that like and subscribe add a comment down below any interaction can help this channel grow and my job is to help grow this channel so more people are aware of it and realize that most of the the stuff out there does not really apply to them as we are so individualized that it really comes down to individual instruction the individual path so with that long intro let's get started first we have bobby bobby welcome let me look up your your stuff here. All right, Bobby has no notes in his swing and his submissions, so no notes means blank. I'm not sure what to uh, expect with this in terms of injuries or history or ball flight. So let's just take a look at this and see this motion. I choose the front view first just to help see ball position. Unfortunately, with Bobby's submission, we took that. Uh, he submitted the video where it's in the backswing, so we kind of missed his address position to see if that's a forward press. Um, based on his wrist hinge, it looks it looks a little forward press, but we'll see what happens. Okay, arms look a little bit low in terms, not low position-wise, but low down here. You can see that club shaft is getting pretty close to that head. So we'll have to look at the down lines to see what's causing that. Probably a left shoulder uh, flattening out. Uh, right knee seems like from this position it straightens out and then reconnects back down, which could affect your your knee tilt and also your hip tilt, which does affect impact. I'll see there's some swaying going left to help those hands get pressed ahead. Good fall through though. You can see those hands are connected to the body as he turns through. So really good job turning through. Nice high finish. You see a little late release there. Club is getting flicked around and finishes again a little bit low. And this little bit of motion here, um, this is all momentum, like how the body is turning through. So might be a little bit too much hands and arms. And when we see a motion like this, that means your hands have crossed the chest and are escaping to that left side. You don't really see this in, in iron shots of uh, high quality players. Uh, but again, we're not searching for high quality players. We're just trying to help individuals get a little bit better. So let's start out by looking at the main objectives is that right brace line. A little impact line going on here and I, and I saw you do sway a little bit into the target so let's see what's causing that and what we're trying to do here so we'll draw a little spine angle line and let's take a look so pretty good bracing it up there really nicely you're still in that spine angle um, that left that left load looks a little bit a little bit peculiar um, the right knee should be a little bit more bent at this point because now your hip tilt is a little bit too much and you can see your left knee is kind of absorbing that extra tilt and it's pushing out. And from here you try and reconnect that tilt. So you see that right knee is starting to break down a little bit, which does affect your loading and unloading. So your unloading now is more of a slide. Um, and you can see you've moved about half a head width into the, into the impact zone. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you something here. So I'm going to take this club back to where the club is parallel. I'm going to draw a line on the edge of your hands. Okay, now we're gonna draw that same line on parallel as you come into the golf ball. So there's that line on parallel. Okay, right about there is the closer we're gonna get. So we are moving about a hand and a half width, almost two widths. Uh, your head has moved about a half a hand width, almost a full width left, which basically means we have a net motion of one hand width. We can also see there's a, a separation between your right hand and your right hip. At this point, it should be closer to that lower body. So it looks like that lower body sliding into it, causing a little bit of this tilting issue. Um, you're not quite uh, ready to strike this ball. 
Um, and as a result, you've, you've essentially moved that ball position ahead one hand width by your net average. Hopefully you're keeping up with me. Um, and as a result here, you can't really re release it until past impact here and your arms are crossing your chest. So as it gets down to, to this parallel line, you can see your right hand and your right arm are really together. Um, it should actually be a little bit closer because you're tilting more under at this point to get those hands close to the center of the chest. So that center of the chest is your key. The sooner you can get those hands to the center of the chest towards impact, the more connected you are to your to your power source. And then when you keep turning through, those hands just ride up the chest. They might move a little bit to your left side, but they won't completely cross over to your left. And you have that, that kind of a, a Jim Furyk-esque follow through where it just kind of flicks over. So um, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense to you. So just from the front line, I mean, your footwork is okay. You can see you're driving from the right toe to the left heel. So you're looking good. You're looking like you're clearing. It just looks very heavy on this left side. You can see the follow through. Look at where your head was. Look where it is now. It's moved over to full head width. A lot of your upper body is over that impact line. Should be more behind it. So I just see a lot of leaning going on, which could be caused by that lower body with the, the knees kind of bracing on the right side and you're buckling down the left side, which will shift your, your weight sooner to the target because it's kind of leaning on. Let's look at the down the line, see if that helps. All right, Bobby, so we're gonna look at the down the line. We're gonna look at the swing first and see if we need to draw some lines. So again, it, it, this video caught it midway in your backswing, so I can't, can't quite see where you start and get the correct plane lines, but we'll try and make best with what we have. Um, club path is okay. Club face is close to your spine angle. It's kind of flaring open. Yeah, you can see your right arm sucks back there. Um, that also straightens your right knee. Um, I'm not sure if that right knee straightening is causing that right arm or it's a combination of both. Um, head, as a result, fights that gravity pulling towards the, the heels. So it's kind of dipping down into the golf ball. And then from the top position. So yeah, you're definitely low, which gives you that perception from the front of the view where your hands are kind of here instead of up, which means you've, you've probably lost some shoulder um, tilting at the top of your swing. As you come down, you're trying to rewrite yourself. You see that right knee kind of kicking down under, and that'll make you sit in your your back heels a little bit too long as it reroutes, and you kind of get stuck on that back heel a little bit. And then you just kind of do your best to, to reroute it. You know, you're coming from the inside, definitely. Um, it's gonna be hard to strike down from that point if it's coming from such a low angle, but you get it done. I mean, you definitely, See that release here coming through. And then again, you see that arms crossing. And that, that last little, see that left elbow? See how it's kind of pulling back? That's momentum of your arms crossing your chest there. Um, okay, let's see where we can start here. I'm gonna try to just come up with a game plan to see if we can help you out. Okay, lower plane line. And we're gonna assume that's a lower plane line. It might have been a little bit lower just because of where uh, you are in your backswing. But if it gets to the top of your swing here, you see those left arm is much lower than that upper plane line. So the left arm should be getting there. And why are we losing that? Let's see if we lose spine. So basically, I'm going to remove this for now really quickly. And we're going to put where your shoulders should be at the top. So it's pretty close to your plane line. Okay, so now where do we get your shoulders at the top? Okay, they flattened a little bit there. So your shoulders are already kind of flattening out. When the shoulders flatten out, they kind of pull your arms a little bit lower. And now all of a sudden you're going to have a path issue and you're going to have to reroute it at some point. Um, and as you can see from here, to get that club back on plane, you have to, your arms have to kind of go up and over and you have to feel like you're really throwing that right shoulder around and increasing your tilt. Um, and you, you do a good job. You can see it's here. It's pointing at that golf ball. So from this position that club face if you're truly rotating around your spine and your arms are truly connected and your hands are hinging correctly you just turn and release and that club head should follow that line straight down to the golf ball so let's see what momentum does for you see how it pulls it down in so now it's going to that lower plane line it actually shifts slightly lower of that lower plane line and that's just a matter of your upper body is rerouting you you're starting to kind of kind of rock a little bit this way which drops your club back in the slot so definitely some 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 uh, spine angle issues you finished there really well you can see you finishing your spine angle your shoulders have now overcompensated so you can see now they're tilting back down whereas the top of the swing that had less tilt so you can see your shoulders are rocking this way it's not necessarily your shoulders it's your spine that's rocking up and down and that has to do with your takeaway so check your check your your footwork you know definitely brace that right knee longer make sure it's bent longer to stop your hips from tilting the other way too soon because once you straighten that right knee up it tilts your hips and then your whole weight wants to fall to the left side and that's probably why you're getting that lean and the left and you're kind of pushing too far left so i hope that helps let me guess where you're from 
Usually people leave me a clue by saying, hey mate, or, or good day, or whatever. But I'm just gonna say, since it looks beautiful and clean and crisp and green, and those, those trees are kind of popping off in the distance, um, Wichita, you know, I've been saying Wichita for a while. I'm gonna get Wichita eventually if I say it every episode. So, Wichita, I'm probably dead wrong, but let me know. Good luck to you. Let's see who's next. All right, next we have Max. So, Max, let's take a look what he said. Uh, widen the stance a little bit, shorten the backswing, and change to a set of clubs with an S flex. Okay. Today I started drilling, just hitting balls with my left hand only. Nice. Uh, results have been good. First time I can start. The ball going left, I'm mean, getting much better compression. I have more forward shaft leaning and impact, and even miss hits are starting to turn out better. The swing also hurts me less. I still see spinny and lack of drive and downswing. I uh, just wanted to get your opinion. Okay, so thanks for letting me know your journey. That's really important for me to know what you're trying to do and accomplish. That way I won't uh, counteract that. Um, but also, I will make suggestions if I see something else. So let's just keep that in mind. Okay. Nice wide takeaway, pretty stable lower body. Upper body does a good job, no leaning there. Great position here, definitely some turn. Hands are out in front of the chest. Great angle there, look at that. 90 degrees almost. Can you hold that 90 degrees, you're pulling it down. You lose a little bit there, so you can see a little bit of a loss there. Impact, your hand should be right in that right hip at impact to help you out. Let's read through that. Okay, your hand should be right, pretty close to that hip. So, tiny bit of loss, tiny bit of power loss. You do a great job, though, of keeping those hands in, in, in the chest. There's a release. Okay. So, waiting is go go doing really good. Waiting still driving. Right side could stay down a tad bit longer. You can see past impact. See that right foot action? See that kind of just turns through? Try and keep that right foot planted a little bit longer. And that's going to help you drive more of that weight that you've stored up into that back left heel. Um, just to help. It seems like you can get away with this. You can get away with getting a straighter right knee. You're very flexible. You have the, the, the positions to do this. If you were not flexible, we wouldn't be trying this. Uh, but you can definitely get that flexibility going. You know, a longer acceleration. So if you get that right knee planted, you know, that knee's going to be straighter here. And that straighter here goes right through that shaft. The shaft should be there as well. That just shows that you're truly connected with your right power source driving up through your body into that shaft, um, which will require less flipping, more turning, and definitely lower body strengthening. So, But all in all, it's, it's looking really good. Um, same sort of thing from this position on. You know, the arms do cross the chest a little bit, and you can see it a little bit. So pretty good from this side. I, I would say... Only thing I would change is maybe just get that right heel to stay a little bit more planted. Now, don't let that rob you of turn with those lower body. So if you start getting that right heel planted and you can still turn like you do, then stay with it. But if all of a sudden you get that right heel planted and you start reducing your turn at impact, you know, don't get it so planted. Just try and find that happy medium. But only you can you can figure this out with your video. So um, if you not work with somebody, work with somebody too. But let me look at the down the line and see what's going on there. Okay, Max, uh, for those that, that are watching this, Max actually submitted the video uh, a while ago and we worked on shortening the swing. So this is like a follow-up video. Um, and and this, is, this is looking good, the thing that you made, Max. So keep it up. Uh, look at that, beautiful takeaway. Club is going right up that, that shaft, matching right over the hand. So perfect, club shaft is matching the spine still. So nothing's been sacrificed there. Okay, really good position here. Left wrist is perfect just to pull back down. Can we drop it in the slot? Look at that. It's maintaining that angle. Yeah, looking good. It would look even better if you get these things connected a little bit more. Great position here. So yeah, keep that right foot, right heel planted just a fraction longer if you can. So get more connected to that ground and push off. So it's going to feel like you're almost pushing off with the inside of your whole right foot into that, that back. Like get you a little bit more behind that golf ball okay really good max I'm, I'm really liking the changes here let's take a look at a couple things what is that you know it's been a long day teaching but it, that's no excuse for that line okay we're gonna draw let's redraw that line man my lines are way off I can't even click this okay so after some issues with my lines I'm going to draw two plane lines for you, upper and lower. Spine angle line, make sure we're holding that spine angle line. We're going to put a little tiny box around your head. And let's see what we got to work with here. 
Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Okay. Are you doing good? All right, so we see here. So this this is what I mainly look for. Once you're in this position here, once the club has found that slot, we draw that line straight down. Now you can see Max, if he continues on that line, he will miss the ball completely. So what does he do? He drops it. He keeps dropping it down. So his hands are set pretty high, but he's comfortable pulling those hands back down to that to that uh, plane. So once it gets closer to the lower plane line, which is here, so he's kind of delayed that action one or two frames. But from here, that club goes straight down to the golf ball, goes right through the hands again. Club is matching the spine, and then he's just gonna strike it. So you see that club head is pretty, pretty square to his target, and then he just kind of does what he can. He should focus more on holding the release a little bit more and get your body through, but you can see why you have to not do that because it's a little bit of disconnection on the way down through in the front, in the front view. So. Ideally, Max, let me go to the front view and do this one more time for you to show you where you should focus on. But the down the line looks looks pretty good. I would say if you want to focus on one small thing in the down the line is maybe setting your shoulders a little bit sooner with the tilt. Um, okay, no, you're fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, let's go to the front. Okay, Max, so let's take a look here. This is what I was trying to explain. Okay, so let's go back it up here. So same sort of thing here. Okay, so we're gonna look at where your inside of your hand is, where the club's at parallel, and we look at the inside of the hands where the club is at parallel again. So you see it's only moved about a hand width, right? Now, you can kind of solve this a couple of ways. You can keep that right foot planted, which will bring your right side a little bit straighter and closer, um, but you would prefer, with you, you prefer to get that those hands to kind of pull back down sooner. So it looks like from here, your whole body is moving in one piece. So you see how your body is moving with your hands. Now, if you keep that relation the same, look at the difference between the hands and the lower body here. You have a lot of width that you have to catch up. It's good to have width. Okay, let me, let me delete these lines here. Okay, so you have this width here. Okay, so that's kind of what you have to work with. As you come down through, you're still turning and dropping the hands, dropping the hands, you're turning, you're turning, you're turning. As it gets down to impact, your hands haven't quite kept up with that amount of turn that you have. They're doing a pretty good job with the upper body. They're still connected with the upper body, but that lower body is getting a little bit out in front of you. Um, so your, your hands are in line with your right shoulder here. You get down to impact. This is where you would like to be when the club's at parallel. So you're still a little bit behind. You're losing a little bit of the angle, losing a little bit of your power. So maybe you've definitely shortened up nicely. So your first move, instead of taking the whole body to move forward, you know, get those hands to kind of drop slightly, you know, get the hands to drop, which allows them to catch up to the body. And then once they've connected to that body, now everything goes together. You're going to get that, that potential energy that you're storing up closer to the power source. So you can try, you can drive one piece and you'll, you'll maintain your angle longer. You'll carry that 90 degrees closer to your hitting bay, hitting point. And once you release it, it'll be more stored power into that golf ball. So other than that, I think you're making some great changes. Uh, just work on these couple things. Let me know how it goes. And uh, I forgot where you're from, so forgive me. It's been a while since I've seen your swing. So let's just throw this out there. I know the last time I saw you was cold and snowy, so let's just say Green Bay. And I know I'm wrong, but do me a favor and say I'm right. Let me just make my date once. Let's see who's next. All right, next up we have Harrison. Now Harrison is as well. He is another returning student. And this is just a follow up to see what's going on here. So Harrison, let's take a look at your notes. Uh, okay, he's working on his posture, helped immensely, which is great. Also, I have to spin around my left heel now in the downswing and finish. I still feel like my release is not the best. It could be as I still feel cramped and with a chicken wing effect. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at this and see what the chicken wing is and why it is there. Uh, let's just take a look at the swing first. Well, I don't really see a chicken wing going on here. All right, so I don't see a chicken wing going on. Uh, you know, chicken wings are usually when these arms start going out like this. So it's either on the way back, on the way through. And when you're doing this, there's something going on with the rotation. There's something going on with the connection. Maybe it's a 
a, a flexibility issue. Um, so there's no real chicken win here. Let me look at from, let me just see overall here. Um, I do see some sliding going on. I still see some front loading as you take that club back. So most of your weight is sitting on that left side. So you can see kind of pointing on your left side, which could lead to a stack and tilt. However, you don't really stack and tilt, you get your weight going to the right side. So now all of a sudden you're trying to get that weight distribution. And now all of a sudden that weight distribution has to come back. So I just see a lot of rocking going on. Uh, your return position is pretty good. You're trying to hold on. I kind of see what you're talking about. A little bit of that left left arm pulling up, but it's not too bad. Um, definitely lower release than you would like. Lower arm position than you would like. So I think the best thing to do is look at the down the line. But from this view, try and, try and be more centered. So start more centered. So instead of being so left sided, feel like it's more evenly distributed. You know, you want to if you want to favor your left side, that's fine. But only favor by five or ten percent at the most so 60 40 55 45 even 50 50 for you you might have to feel like you're doing 55 right side 45 left side to kind of get yourself in the middle and then just focus on staying more centered you don't need any of this extra extra rocking because that's one more thing we have to time in a very short amount of time so let's look at the down the line and see if that is going to change our view all right harrison so let's look at this let's see why we have that low arms here okay Little, little laid off and that lean left okay so let's look at it from this side let's look at the angles that we need to focus on for you there's that uh, upper body spine angle there's your lower plane line your upper plane line and your brace line and then lastly just to see if there's any motion let's look at your head so as we take that club back see the club's disconnected already so there's a lot of rolling going on in your hands so that rolling pulls that club very low, and now you're really laid off. So your left arm is gonna be much lower than it needs to be. You're tilting, your tilting is definitely higher than it needs to be. So you can see your left shoulder is much higher than 90 degrees. So just remember, wherever you start at, the, at, the, at, your, at your basis. So if you're starting here, you have to tilt and maintain that level shoulders around your spine, and that's what gives you a tilt. We don't add tilt, we don't delete tilt, we just, basically turn around our posture so you can see your by rolling your wrists open your left shoulder is going up with that momentum and it's pulling you out of your posture a little bit you get very low arms at the top of your swing which causes a very flat and uh, almost laid off position here and from here unless you do something where you reroute and get those hands back on top and, and adjust your tilting too so you'd have to go from flat to steep which will get your arms back on top but then you're going to fight, you know, a timing issue. And there's people that can do it. I'm not saying you can't do it, but can you do it consistently? It's probably going to be an issue. Um, there is no rerouting going on here for your shoulders. So at impact, you can see you're kind of just stuck with a very low arm position. And from here, you know, that, that club head is following that lower plane line. They match up here, but it's a little too late to match up. Now it's just, you've got about three or four frames to strike the golf ball. Your momentum's going left because we saw from the front view that you're really lean left at the target. So you pair that, you pair that reconnection plus a lean left, which alters your ball position. That's a lot of things going on. And, you know, 0.2 to 0.3 seconds, very fast. I mean, a couple of blinks of your eye and that's your downswing. So just think about all that extra motion we're trying to eliminate. So from this point of view, Definitely get that left shoulder to stay down as you take that club back and you need to feel like your arms are going higher to that secondary plane line. And from there, just focus on turning through, you know, keep it around that spine angle. So I hope that helps you. Again, I forgot where you're from too, because, you know, after a video or two in the past, I forget a bunch of stuff. Heck, I can't even remember what I ate yesterday. So um, forgive me, but let's just stay, uh, you know what, Wichita. I'm gonna say Wichita again. I'm going two videos with Wichita. One of them has to be it, I think, right? It's like the monkey typing the Bible. If you give enough monkeys unlimited time, you know, unlimited typewriters, one will type the Bible word for word. That's my philosophy. I'm going to go Wichita every time until someone's from Wichita. Hope that helps. Let's see who's next. All right, this video is a makeup from one I did a few videos ago, um, and this was submitted to me. This one went to my spam folder, so I found the face on. So this was for a student that we did a couple of videos that we only had to down the line. So this is a face on, and let's pull up his uh, deal here. Okay, so no real notes. Let's take a look. Okay, neutral-ish grip, little little bit of an issue with the 
spine with the ball position so we'll go over that real quick definitely tilting okay tilting gives you a high position which is hard to swing on the upswing with that high position uh, lower body is getting a little bit out of position here your hands don't really have anywhere, anywhere to go so you have to try and make some room okay yeah there's definitely you can get it done I mean there's no doubt that you can time this I mean this is a very strong position I would imagine you hit this pretty good when you do time it um, and then pretty bad when you don't time it right and the unfortunate thing is timing it good and timing it right is so minute that it can be a day-to-day -day kind of player um, sometimes even a front nine back nine type of player or even one hole at a time you could stripe it and all of a sudden you try that same swing and it just doesn't time right so just remember we have 0.2 to 0.3 seconds to hit that golf ball um, so a lot can go right and a lot can also go wrong so we want to limit some 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 uh, positions so let's look at this from here so based on your spine your hands are connected but look where that ball position should be I mean, remember, we're trying to hit on the way up. We're not trying to hit on the way down. So you don't really, you, two things. You don't, You can either, you know, you don't need that much tilting. Um, if you do, you have to tee this ball up pretty high and put it almost outside your left heel to make sure that this spine angle works. Because remember, as you swing, you actually increase your tilt. So, you know, your increased tilt, you'll actually be here if you swing correctly. You'll be further back and back over here to help him on the upswing. So, you know, you definitely want to get this ball further out because now you're almost swinging on the downswing. You have to recontour yourself to try and hit on the upswing. Uh, pair that with this takeaway. You can see here at the top, you're doing a really good job bracing that right brace line. Your left shoulder seems to be going mighty low for that top position. Um, with, the, with the driver, we don't need to hit down. And if you're starting to increase your tilt as you go back up, you're putting yourself in a position to strike down on the ball. So maybe just level things out, stand a little bit taller, I mean, taller, slightly closer, you know, feel more upright so you can get those shoulders to be more level because you want to, you know, swing on the way up and it's easier with level shoulders. If I'm swinging on the way down, you know, it's hard to hit on the way up when my body's, you know, upper body's going down because I'm going to meet that ground sooner. Um, so I see that definitely. You're leaning forward slightly here, doesn't help the cause. Um, you should be from this position, you should be getting that lower body to move out the way, you know, get that lower body to make that first move. So hip towards the target, which will allow your upper body to get that extra tilt that we need uh, because you tilt around your spine nicely, but at impact, you've shifted your spine ahead of the ball. And now your spine angle is about here, right? So it's ahead of the golf ball and it's still matching it. So at impact, I mean, look at how much you've you've changed your, your spine angle. I mean, your spine angle with the upper body is here, but then it curves back down to here. So look at the pressure you're putting on that lower body. So that is a sign of a lot of tilting, and we don't need tilting because when you add tilt, you start getting that, that broken down look. It should be more turning. So uh, a couple of things could be causing this is ball position. So ball position, definitely, if it's incorrect for the motion you're trying to do, you start going to start compensating so definitely change that ball position move forward further out towards your left foot keep the hands where they are don't press those hands there just change that shaft angle to kind of be here you know so everything's kind of matching that spine um, get more weight towards the right side it, it just looks like from this position you're stacked up it could be that ball position though um, so once you get that ball out here feel like you're slightly on the right side, you know, 60% on the right side and stay on the right side. There's no reason to move right and then move left. Just once you get set up here, stay on that right side and almost feel like your upper body's gonna hang back a little bit while that lower body drives into the target, which allows you to now all of a sudden swing up from behind the golf ball instead of covering the ball and then trying to readjust yourself to swing up. It just looks like too many things going on in a small amount of time. But when you do stripe it, I bet you stripe it pretty well because you've, you've managed to manipulate your body and I see it in there. Um, so let's take a look when you strike this golf ball. You know, there's a manipulation, but it just doesn't look connected. It just looks like the upper body's trying to do one thing, the lower body's trying to do one thing. It's not working as a, as a tool. Um, you can see most of your weight shifts out to your toes. Look at, look at that left foot, the left foot spins out and you're up in your toes. So you pair that, I mean, your lower body's trying to get out the way, your upper body's going down, adding tilt. I mean, that's just a lot of torque the wrong way. I mean, that's almost like a, a, an iron swing. Um, and look at that lower body. That lower back is prone to a lot of injuries. So just be really careful with this. Uh, make these changes wisely. 
And if you don't have anybody that you're, you're watching, excuse me, if you don't have anybody that you're working with to monitor these changes, I highly suggest you just go and say, hey pro, just give me 30 minutes. Just watch this motion, see if I'm doing it right. Record yourself, know what you're looking at, try and diagnose yourself correctly. Uh, but best of luck to you. Hope this helps you. And I'm sorry I missed this on the last video. And I'm glad it's a driver so we can see it as well. But um, I forgot where I mentioned you were from. But you know what? I'm going with Wichita. We're going with three videos today with Wichita. One should be correct. Let's see who's next. Final one. Okay, last up we have Jacob. Jacob. All right, Jacob been playing about a year and a half. So welcome to golf. Anybody that's within three or four years is still new to me. So welcome to golf. Uh, looking for any ways to improving, mainly struggling with consistency. Would love if you analyze my swing. Perfect. So, do we have a down the line? Or excuse me, a face on or just okay? Yeah, we do. Perfect. All right. So we got a nice worm eye view. Uh, worm eye views are, are good. At least they're down low, but they're hard to see where the club is going. But I can definitely see you pick up the club a little bit. Uh, a lot of turning, straightening out with the right knee, and then you re-stabilize that right side. Um, Okay, you definitely turn a lot. You have a lot of action going on here. Again, somebody that produces a lot of power, um, you probably stripe it really well when you hit it. And then there's days where you just have, you know, you want to throw that club in the bushes and you want to you know, wrap it around a tree sometimes. And I know that frustration. It's very frustrating at times, but I can see why it can be frustrating. Let's go with the front view first because I think that might help us a lot better. Oh, you know what? We're on the, we're on the same video. Let's go front view. Look at this. Bam. We're in the front view. Wow. Okay. So first of all, those clubs are just whippy. So you definitely need to get some stronger shafts. Those shafts aren't keeping up with your rotation. Um, so keep this in mind. So when you have whippy shafts, you see that club faces, you know, look how much it's whipping back and whipping through so again this look at that it's like it's like a hose pipe right now some of this could be camera you know i know that camera shutters can make things look a little bit warped but you know i've seen enough swings to know that that's probably not a warping issue that's definitely loading and unloading so in order to time that whippy shaft that's another thing you have to keep in mind uh, and you don't want a club that, that releases too soon because it's not keeping up with your rotation so if you have a club that can't keep up with your rotation and it's, and it's releasing too soon, all of a sudden you have to slow your rotation down, increase your hand speed to get those clubs to match up to your rotation. So you want something to keep up with your rotation. But let's see why you have a lot of hands involved because that could also be an issue too. So we're going to put that right brace line over you. We're going to put that impact line right there. We're going to put the head brace line just to see any motion. And what we'll do is we'll put a little spine angle line right down through so setup is looking phenomenal club is going right through the spine right through by way of the hand so you're truly connected to your core let's take a look as you take that club back so good job i mean look at that spacing so really good job turning i think you you need to stop turning there you know that little extra turn you know all of a sudden that's going to pull your body back a little bit um your shoulders look very flat so anytime we see and again this could be the the camera angle but anytime we see that club head going through your head that means your hands are very low instead of being a little bit higher. So you might not be getting to your secondary plane line. It's hard to see from that down the line if you make that secondary plane line just because it's a worm view. Um, if, if the camera was hip height, it would be perfect. But we'll try our best again. Um, you get that, that weight driving left. I see some spinning out with the right side. Okay, you definitely, you, might, you can hit this ball hard. I can see it. But a lot of rotation. So not a lot of tilting going on. Um, and when there's rotating... And you know, it could be the fact that you're not tilting because that club is just un unloading too soon. And if you have any sort of tilt with an unloading shaft, it could hit the ground three inches behind the ball, it could top the ball. So this is where making sure that that club is correct for you. Um, but look at the spine angle. So you're sitting perfect. Look how much you move into the golf ball. So you've moved into it, you know, a good, I don't know what that could be. What is that, six, eight inches? And then you strike the golf ball and you stay on that spine angle. So, and then you can see the, your finished spine angle is definitely left. So you have a lot of good turn here. And then you go left, strike the ball, and still left. So there's just a lot of left, 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 left. And left, 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 and turn. Again, I mean, I don't know how long you've been using those clubs. But, you know, if you use clubs that are inadequate for you as an athlete, you'll find a way to make those clubs work. And for you, maybe to slow down that, that release point, maybe to help 
excuse me, compensate that release point, you've learned how to lean in. So when it does release sooner, it can catch the golf ball. Could be a possibility. So we all things are on the table here. Um, so setup looks okay. Your lower body looks okay. Upper body just looks too heavy going left, left, and a little bit too much turn. So let's see if he gets that secondary plane line. Let's try our best on this worm view to get some sort of plane lines. And spine angle line. Now let's see what's going on here. Okay, so it is lower. That club is laid off. So I'm, I'm assuming it's much lower than it actually leads to believe. Because that right elbow, it's nowhere near 90 degrees. And the only way to get it 90 degrees is by lifting things going up to establish the 90 degrees. Once you get it less than 90 degrees, you could be going down and away. So that's the one telltale sign for me. Um, so definitely, you know, loss of shoulders. So you, you're turning and you may be rolling the club back. To, again, kind of like the last video, rolling it, left shoulder getting up a little bit too high. Um, you can see your right side is straightening out. You'd like that to be a little bit more you know braced so you don't have to straighten out so much uh, because now all of a sudden you're gonna have to you know get your knees involved and that affects your tur your turning with the knees so keep them a little bit more braced which will maybe help secure that that lower body turn um, and then from here you, know, you can see that action there look it goes from straight to turn so that to me is not effective use of power think of it like a spring so you want to keep it a little bit braced at the top of the thing top of your swing so when you push into the ball you have something to push into so if, if my knee is has a little bend I know that's not really a good-looking knee but let's say my, my my knee is here and then I'm bent so when I'm pushing into the golf ball I can push up into something that's bent but if it's straight and then I bend it you know I'm not really pushing off on anything I'm kind of loading more weight and then I have to push at the very end so it's almost like I'm bouncing up and down instead of loading and unloading loading and you kind of you're trying to jump so imagine jumping how would you jump with a straight leg you'd have to bend back down and jump or if you jump with your legs already bent you can just go ahead and jump so it's easier with your legs bent to just jump and push off so you definitely want to focus on that as well um, coming down through your arms you can see they're behind the eight ball there they're kind of stuck on that right side um, probably because of a lot of turn your left arm gets too low and now it's stuck on the way back and now you have to just kind of throw through so you don't suffer a turn at all. I mean, you have a lot of turn, maybe too much turn. So definitely work with the lower body stability. Get those knees to brace a little bit more. Check your alignment uh, specifically with the, the distance of your golf ball. It's hard to tell from this position, but then also check that left shoulder. Make sure that left shoulder doesn't go up by you rolling your hands, but also that it goes down. And then finally, go get those clubs checked. Go put them on a flight, flight machine, a dating magic machine. Go see somebody that knows what they're doing with golf clubs. And no knock on the big the big box stores, but you know, no knock on those guys, but they work on commission and sometimes they push clubs that they you know are instructed to push. You need to go to somebody that doesn't have a staff agreement, that is not on staff with anybody, that's gonna push certain equipment. You need to go to somebody with an unbiased opinion. Uh, I know they're hard to find, but let me know where you're from. I'm gonna guess you're from uh, Wichita. Let's go four out of four. Let's see if one of you is from Wichita. But if not, let me know. I'll try and help you find a club fitter near you that you can just pay. Uh, you know, it's worth 100 bucks to go and make sure you get this thing checked correctly. But hope that helps you guys. And uh, I'll be releasing episode, uh, whatever the next episode is, tomorrow. And then we just have a few more episodes and then whatever new submissions. So if you know anybody that wishes to submit, go ahead and send them my way. And I wish you all the best. And thanks for joining me in this past half an hour. Fair and green. Together we are